Hi, this is the Bladder Cancer Diary update. It is July 29th, Wednesday in the evening, and um, had to make a pretty tough decision. As you know, I had that procedure done on June 30th. We'd been waiting for all the pathology to come back, and uh, finally got a chance to speak to the oncologist and surgeon um, uh, two days ago. And um, it was not the best phone call. You know, I am in a premier cancer hospital, but everybody's human. And I know that COVID-19 has put an enormous strain on all healthcare providers. And I know it was a different kind of conversation with my doctor. I mean, I think he's brilliant and he's certainly saving my kidney and my life right now. I have nothing but gratitude for him and all the people that work at uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering Hospital. That really is my heart feeling about the care I've been receiving since I've been in their care. And I've been in their care off and on uh, since about 2013, I believe, or maybe 2012. But uh, I was on his A game on Monday. Um, a lot of confusion. I'm getting mixed messages, and that's not good. So the I got pathology results back that seemed to indicate I had no cancer in my kidney or my bladder. He did scrape out, you know, tissue from those two areas on June thirtieth. We'd been waiting for the pathology. We got the good news back. We've been rejoicing here in our home. Uh, atypical cells negative for high-grade aggressive cancer, um, uh, inflammation, scar tissue, um, things like that was in the pathology reports. And the cytology report, which is a deep screening of the urine, came back negative also. This was reported to us. So I had great anticipation to speak with the doctor because Prior to him going away on vacation, which is well-deserved, he had already suggested, based on his look-see into my kidney, what appeared to be cancer cells. This was before we got the pathology back. This was his eyeballing it. Um, he felt like I would need chemotherapy, which is this new treatment called mitogel, which is mitomycin. It's a chemical. I had it about 24 rounds of it in my bladder proper, but they have figured out a way to put this drug inside the kidney now. And it's rather remarkable. This is a new FDA approved procedure, which is fantastic because we don't get too many new uh, medications from the FDA for bladder cancer. This, was, this isn't one of your top cancers. We, we're the bastard cancer of cancers, and we need way more attention to bladder cancer. But anyway, we have this new treatment for urothelial carcinoma in the upper tract of the urinary system, which is my kind of cancer. Aren't I lucky? So that means I have cancer of the lining of my urinary tract, and I get the cancer in my lower tract, which is my bladder, and I get it in the upper tract, which was the surprise we found in 2016, where the tumor showed up in my renal pelvis and the poles of my kidney. So anyway, there's this new treatment, right? And with the mitogel, which means they can now insert this drug through the ureter and deposit, which is essentially like a gelatinous material, a gelatin, with this drug in it and it just hangs out there in the kidney for four to six hours and slowly but surely uh, you expel it, you void it uh, and you urinate, you void it out. So it's a very fascinating thing uh, and the reason why your urine doesn't just melt the gel away because it's highly acidic ordinarily is because the preparation for this medication is the consumption of some bicarbonate soda. In other words, the night before and the day of that procedure, I have to, I'm not sure, I guess it's oral, I have to take bicarbonate soda. 
and that will make my urine alkaline. Consequently, when I am voiding while that medication is sitting in my renal pelvis, just at the opening to the ureter, the urine does not, the mitogel does not melt from the acid of the urine. It's really a spectacular methodology and vehicle for delivering this medication. And of course the hopes are it would prevent new tumors from growing. But here's the rub. The efficacy rate is 50-50. Not the best odds. Some hope, some odds, but not the greatest odds. In fact, I've had 24 rounds of this and I still grow those pesky tumors anyway. So it was a lot to ask given negative cytology and negative biopsies to then go into the city six times for once a week for six consecutive weeks. I would assume that means I have to get a COVID test prior to each treatment. It is a treatment done under a fluoroscope, which is similar to when you get like a cardiac catheterization. So it's done under an x-ray machine. They insert it all while you're awake and install the med instill the medication. Oh, and there's a killer side effect. Bleeding, spasms, discomfort, and a 20% chance that it could cause stenosis of your ureter which means I wouldn't, I would be prevented from peeing, which is very dangerous and it would require an emergency room visit to have a stent placed in my ureter. So I had to weigh all that out to make a decision. And I asked the doctor, could I bypass having this treatment? Could we just do surveillance for 60 or 90 days, like is the usual uh, protocol? Uh, given that the pathology came back negative for cancer, given that the pathology, the cytology came back negative for high grade cancer, could we just go with another ureteroscopy, which is the surgery under anesthesia? Well, he'll put a camera in and a laser in and go searching and destroying cancer cells in my kidney and my bladder. That was preferable to me. And so he said it was my choice to make. And I have decided to go with the surgery in late September, or excuse me, late October, August or early September and bypass this um, mitogel treatment. I mean, if he told me I absolutely needed to have the treatment, I wouldn't question it. I would do it. But he didn't seem to express that in any real sense of urgency. And he's going in at the end of August, which means it's really a 60-day look-see. Usually it's a 90-day. So if something's there, chances are it won't be so large that it could hurt me. And he'll be able to handle it. And then if I've got to do it after that, then I'll cross that bridge when I get there. So that's the latest update from me on my living with bladder cancer journey. This is my bladder cancer diary. I'd like to keep you up to date. Listen, I'm doing okay. Remember, I'm the miracle kid. I still have a kidney in my body. And uh, I wake up every day feeling grateful about that. And as I said, for all the healthcare workers doing their extraordinary work in these extraordinary times, I got nothing but respect and appreciation and gratitude for you all. This is not an easy time. And uh, because of you and your sacrifices and your good work, I'm able to have a life here, even a good life in the midst of this pandemic. And that just fills me with awesome gratitude for all of you. So I hope this helps somebody. Remember, get involved, know what your cancer is, do the research about the treatments, um, uh, ask questions, write down questions, have questions for your doctors. You're your own best advocate. Nobody can advocate like you can, and it's perfectly okay to do. 
All right, peace to you all. Take good care. God bless you all. And I'll look forward to giving you the latest update the next uh, big uh, uh, time that I come to. Take good care.